Hey everybody, it's Charles with Craving Shaving, and I was tagged by Tim Shaves in the 54321 uh, challenge, or, or I don't know, tagged videos that's going around. So um, I was very grateful to get tagged. I don't think I've been tagged in one of those before. I can't remember having been tagged in one before. So uh, it's pretty exciting. I'm, I am really excited to be part of this whole 54321 thing. I can tell you it's very difficult to some of you, you some of you um, can probably relate. It's very hard to say, well, this is, these are my five favorite soaps because I like all of them. Um, if I don't like them, I've gotten rid of them. So um, very, very difficult. I've tried my best to narrow it down. There's different things, different reasons why I like all of these products. And uh, I'll get into a little bit of why for each of them. So let's start with my five soaps. And I do want to say that none of these are in no particular order. Again, it was hard enough to come up with five that I could reasonably say these are my favorites. It would be really hard to put them in order. Well, this is my fifth favorite. This is my fourth. This is my first, you know, so um, there's no order to these other than I guess that at this point in time, these are my five favorite soaps. Um, the first one, Zingari Man, The Prophet. Absolutely, first of all, love the scent of this. Orange, you know, it says orange, myrrh, or myrrh, orange and vanilla. I don't know what myrrh smells like, but uh, I'm, I'm digging it. It's, it's kind of a spicy orange and vanilla scent, and it's awesome. I love it. Also, the main reason that this makes um, the list is one, it is one of my top scents. I love the scent year-round. It's, it's a very holiday-ish scent, but I do love it year-round. Just gonna take another whiff of it. Ooh, it's so good. Um, but the other thing is, I'm I'm one of the people. People always talk about post shave, and that's never really been something I've paid attention to. I've never been like, oh man, my skin's so dried out after that. Um, my skin, you know, oh my skin, blah blah blah. I, I don't I I don't know if I just have a skin type that just isn't really bothered by things or what. But I did notice every time I've I've used. Zingari Man, The Prophet, I've been like, wow, my skin feels great afterwards. It's the only one that's made me think that. So it's got to be on the list uh, for really for that reason alone. So that one is definitely on the list. This next one has a very, very good reason for being on the list. First of all, okay, let's get that to focus. Uh, Summer Break Soap's base is phenomenal. Um, this is the original base uh, that they had when they released uh, their first round of soaps, I think. Um, but this is Cannonball, and it has WS23 in it, which introduced me to this product in general, and it is fantastic. It's a synthetic coolant, and it knocks my socks off every time. The scent is really nice. It's chlorine and orange and... Um, I forget what else. Um, kind of like a, a fruity, chlorine-y scent, and I, it... It's, it's great, and it leaves your face feeling really cold, but like an authentic cold, like you actually have, you know, ice cubes on your face. It's fantastic. So Cannonball from Summer Break Soaps has to be on the list. Uh, next, whew, yeah, I gotta, I gotta smell this one too. Oh, so good. I never thought I was a Bay Rum person until I experienced... Um, this soap in particular, this is the first one that I smelled that I was like, okay, Bay Rum as a scent note, it works. Bay Rum by itself, I still don't think I'm a fan of. I haven't ever smelled as just straight Bay Rum that I've liked. But Boomtown Bay Rum from uh, Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements is just one of my favorites. I really, really like the scent. It's kind of like a just manly, <laughs> I mean... Cowboy, I don't know. Uh, I, I like gunpowder as a scent as well, and so I think uh, I think that combined with I don't know whatever else, leather also leather gunpowder and bay rum um, or bay. I just I just think it's it's fantastic, and I love the artwork. I mean, check that out. Right, it's just it's just awesome. I specifically wanted this artwork for because they have like three different ones. And uh, this one, let's see, yeah, this is the Kokum 
shave uh, coke and butter uh, formula, not CK6, but even even this formula, whoops, is fantastic. CK6 is is marginally better, but I had to choose this one out of all my PAA soaps just because I just love the scent. Sorry, I'm out of the shot here, but yeah, that's the third out of the five favorite soaps. Next one um, gets onto the list because of the scent mostly, although I do really like the base as well. That is Lotus Eater Soap Company, Kookaburra's Laugh, Sandalwood and Patchouli, which does not sound like something that I would like, but uh, it just every time I use it, and I, I almost forget sometimes how much I like it, and then I open it up and I'm just blown away by it. Also, it sticks with you. I mean, you, you would probably smell this over your aftershave, <laughs> um, depending on which aftershave you use, of course. There are some really strong ones. But, um, like, if I were to use this and then slap some skin bracer on, you probably would smell this <laughs> over the skin bracer, which some of you, I understand, would be like, ooh, I don't like that. But I like smelling this uh, all around. And he doesn't do, um, at, at the time of shooting this, uh, Jake doesn't do any aftershave, so... This the scent of this sticking around is all, all really we have to go on. So, all right, and then the last one. Um, it has to be this. Now, okay, I'm just going to do this and we'll, we'll talk about that later. It's Katie's Bubbles, Saturday morning. Oh, man, guys. Phew. Saturday morning is just a nostalgic. I mean, they got it basically just spot on opening a bag of Fruit Loops or a Tutti Fruities or whatever, whatever, you know, brand of a Fruit Loop-like cereal uh, that you grew up with, and it's, it's just super nostalgic. Also, I really like the texture of the lather in this. It's a really hard soap, um, this one that I have, and uh, I like hard soaps because I feel like I can control better uh, how much um, water goes into it. I don't know if that's just in my head or what, but I, I like it. So... Those are my uh, five favorite soaps of, as of, of the time of shooting this. I left a lot out that I really like. I didn't mention Sterling, although Sterling is fantastic. Um, I really like Razor Rock soaps, especially for the price. Um, a and E. There are a lot of other good ones. I'm not saying I don't like those, obviously, but these um, have to be my five favorites as of right now. Okay. Um, and I believe it's four after aftershaves. This was the hardest because I don't have a lot of, of post-shave products. <laughs> um, so we're just going to go with them again in no particular order. Um, first one, Skin Bracer. Um, it's just classic. I love it. Um, I love the scent. I love how cheap it is. I love the burn. I'm one of those people that just, I, I love the burn, and so that's got to be on my list. Um, yeah, I like how it's green. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's it's nice. I, I enjoy it. Um, we'll go another Summer Break Soaps product. Again, I, I mean, I have to have this in there. Even though I've already gone to Summer Break Soaps, I've got to go there again because Icy Stare has that WS-23 in it, and it, especially in the summertime, I, I love it. You can't beat it. Um, so, Icy Stare or Cannonball. I have both of the aftershaves. This one's scentless, so you can actually pair it with a different scent if you want, um, which is pretty awesome. Um, Razor Rock Sicily. Yeah, let's get that. There we go. Um, I just really like the scent. Again, it's, it's pretty affordable. and has a great scent. And uh, this one my wife really likes the smell of, and that's got to factor into... Um, <laughs> how I enjoy it as well because I like a scent that, that she likes. <laughs> um, and then the last one, this is the one that was easiest for me. I really like the form factor more than anything. I do like the scent of this. I have a couple of these um, and would like to get more, but that is just star jelly in general from Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements. I just really like the form factor. It's like kind of a aftershave gel like hand sanitizer almost thing it's got alcohol in it so i still get that burn um, but it's a balm kind of too and i i really really enjoy this product so that's um 
that's has to be on the, the list for the aftershaves um, or post shave products. Okay, um, three brushes now, and I make shaving brushes, and I'm not gonna be that guy that's like, hey, here's my favorite brushes, and I have like my own brushes. That would be kind of weird to me. So I'm not gonna choose any of my own brushes. I think that'd be tacky, um, especially when I have some fantastic brushes from other artisans that I really, really enjoy. So um, these all kind of have uh, sentimental value in, in one way or another as well. First one that I want to talk about is this just absolutely beautiful um, handle from Turn and Shave. This is Milton at Turn and Shave uh, made this brush and it is absolutely fantastic. The blue and the silver. This is not the original knot that was in the brush. Um, when I was ordering or Let's see, I, I won this one actually in a, a giveaway, um, but it was a custom, and so he s said, what knot do you want? I'd not tried a ghost knot, and so I said, a ghost knot, I want to try a ghost knot, and I didn't actually end up liking that, that's no fault of, of Milton's, but I just didn't know what I was getting, and got it, and I was like, yeah, I'm not really a fan of that. I had this in another brush, and I was like, that would look so cool, and so I, I knocked it out of that other brush and, and did a transplant put the this knot in here and it's just awesome and, and and the reason why this one's a little bit sentimental to me is because um, when I was starting craving shaving the brush business part um, I was I, I didn't know what I was doing didn't know how to get started and was worried about reaching out to other brush makers because I had no idea how they would respond to me being like hey I want to make brushes too can you can you give me some information on on how I get you know started doing that you know, didn't know if they'd be like, ah, oh, it's a trade secret, you need to you need to mind your own business. And it was the opposite of that completely uh, with Milton. He was like, hey, yeah, let me answer your question, let me help you out with this. Hey, there's there's this group on Facebook with all these brush makers that I can have you join. Um, come on in, ask questions, and the whole community opened up. And it was just a, a fantastic um, experience. So um, having this brush from Milton... Um, turn and shave. Uh, it, it's it's awesome to have this because he's the one that really helped me get into this, um, and that's kind of a theme that's going to uh, be throughout this. Um, this one is from my good friend Scott Rollins, at Shaving King's Cave. This is one that um, he made. There's a as you can see a Ducati motorcycle inside there, a little you know toy motorcycle. It's a really big handle, which I like because I'm a big guy, uh, and it's got a very unique knot in it, which is really fun. This knot is really floppy and soft, but sometimes you want that. One of the best things about wet shaving is the variety, and although usually I don't want a really floppy knot, sometimes I do, so it's nice to have that available. So um, he hasn't been making brushes lately. I'm hoping he gets back into it um, soon so that um, people can, can enjoy these brushes as well. And I have some more of his uh, stuff back there as well. And then the last one I want to talk about um, in my three brushes is this brush that I just received from Rob Moffat. That darn Rob. And it's just absolutely, I mean, I don't even know if this is going to come through on the video. I'm sure it will. Man, the burl, oh, it's just so beautiful. I've been calling this beautiful burl, and it's just great. I, I love it. I love his coin. I think it's fantastic, and um, yeah, just absolutely love it. It's got a Fanchurian knot in there from him as well. Um, I, it's it's amazing. I love this uh, this brush. I've only used it a couple times because I just got it like just a bit ago. But it is uh, probably currently, maybe it's because it's so new, I don't know, but it's currently my favorite brush uh, that I have. So um, that's my three brushes. Okay, for my two razors, I'm kind of going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to do three razors uh, because one of them I'm not really counting uh, as, my, as my favorite because I really don't know if you can actually go and purchase one. Um, so that's this one. Now, if you've been here on the channel for a long, you probably have heard this already, but for those of you who are just coming here, 
Um, this is something that I got in a promotion from West Coast Shaving. Um, so I always just kind of refer to it as the West Coast Shaving Prototype Razor, because I don't know what else to call it. Um, and they did a promotion where they said, if you spend $50 or something like that, then we will send you a prototype of some kind. Could be a brush, could be a soap, could be a razor. And this is what I got. When, and at the time when I got it, I really wanted a prototype brush, I think, because I didn't have many at the time. And I was kind of like, oh man, I got, I got this razor. It doesn't look really all that special as far as the, uh, the head. But something about the blade geometry on this one really, really works. Now, this isn't confirmed. But I think you, you can get this. Uh, there's one that looks really, really similar um, on the West Coast Shaving website. It's called the 3D Wrap Razor. And in my opinion, I think they should have gone with this design rather than the one that they went with for the 3D Wrap Razor, if it is indeed the, the, same, the same razor. Um, they went with kind of a really, in my opinion, unfortunate kind of like shapes design. There's like triangles and... <laughs> squares and stuff on it. I don't know. Um, not, not for me. Um, I, I, but I, I love this. It's, it's my go-to, but since it's not, um, confirmed that you can go out and buy one, let me, uh, let me share two razors that you can and, and really should go out and buy. Um, if you want a really good razor, especially if you want one that's really good and, and, and not going to break the bank. The first one would be the Rockwell 6C I absolutely love this razor, um, and I think that it's fantastic. Great handle, nice handle length in my opinion, um, and of course the interchangeable base plates. I just think that's brilliant, and uh, for the price, I think they're what, $50, and you get six, or well, three base plates with, that are two-sided, so you really have six base plates that you can customize your shave with. I think that's absolutely a brilliant thing. And $50 as far as like a nice razor goes is really not that bad in this in this hobby. So um, that would be one of my official two razors. The other one would have to be the Fine Accoutrements Marvel razor. Um, I absolutely love the handle and the really rounded, um, what do you call that, safety bar on the uh, base plate. I... I think that it really allows you to control the angle that you shave with and then how, f how it's kind of like flattened. Um, it just, it just makes it really intuitive to find the correct angle to shave with it. Um, it's really efficient, but not super aggressive. And that's in my opinion, what we're all looking for, right? I don't think anyone's like, I want it to be really harsh on my skin, you know, but we want it to be really efficient in removing the hair without being too harsh on her skin. And I think that's what this one does, and that's why it lands in my top two razors. Um, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And that leaves me with just one more thing, my one favorite razor blade. Um, now, I've really only tried one of each of the you know artist style and the gem and injector blades. I really haven't experimented much with those, so I really don't feel like I can say much about them. Um, but DE blades, I've tried all kinds, and this is the one that I've landed on as my favorite. Is that a, okay? <laughs> Seven o'clock sharp edge um, in the yellow packet um, by Gillette, and, and really any of Gillette's products are fantastic. But this one is is the one that I've got the most consistent results with. The sharp edge. It's not too terribly sharp like feathers. I've had mixed results with feathers. I've had fantastic shaves with them. And I've had abysmal shaves with them. And I feel like these ones are also extremely sharp, but not to the point where it's... it's I, I, overall, my average amount of uh, pain and suffering has been less with these. Now, again, if you've watched my videos, you know that I cut myself constantly. Um, no matter what blade I'm using. But... These ones do give me probably my best, most reliable results. So um, there's that for what that's worth. And I think that does it. So we're uh, we're at the end of the five, four, three, two, one video. Um, I don't know who's done these yet. Um, so I'm going to think about. I probably should have thought about this before, but I will tag someone. I, I want to tag. You know who I want to tag? I want to tag tag Scott Rollins. 
Uh, the maker of this brush, whoa. <laughs> the maker of this brush, haven't seen him do uh, much lately. I don't know if he'd be willing to, to make this, but if you want to make a 54321 video, Scott, I'd love to see your 54321 video. I don't know, I'm holding it, I guess because I'm talking to Scott. Um, and uh, that's it for now. Um, I may tag, officially that's, that's my tag. Um, and uh, I haven't contacted him already about it, so I don't know if he'll, uh, he'll be doing that at all. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what we're going to go with. So thanks for tuning in for this. Um, uh, again, these are my kind of current, uh, favorites. There are some other things that like, I'm not one for bombs, but I got to say Zingari is one that nearly, very nearly made the uh, list and, and maybe should have made the list as far as post shave products, but I'm not really a bomb person. I like the burn. <laughs> which is kind of ironic. I know people argue that alcohol isn't good for your skin, but I like it. And so it, uh, it got bumped, but it's, it's so hard guys. All of, all of these products are fantastic. I have way more fantastic products back there from great artisans and companies. And it's, it's fun to kind of go through them, but I, I just hope no one's offended that their stuff didn't make my list. Um, because I love all of it. And, uh, but it's not the, you know, 30, 25, 16, 5, 2 video. It's the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 video. So anyway, thank you for tuning in. Um, if you enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Um, not going to hurt my feelings. And uh, thank you to Tim for tagging me in this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, you thinking of me and uh, I've been enjoying your channel. And uh, if you haven't seen Tim Shave's channel, I'm going to put a link to his uh, channel down in the description below as well. Um, he's got some some great videos on there. So thanks for tuning in to this episode of Craving Shaving and hope you have a wonderful day.